Hi, welcome to Above Life channel. I'm Bridget. The purpose of this channel is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope. Today's weekly channeling video is someone that I have looked up to during my lifetime, and but someone I never met because he was gone before I arrived. All right, are you ready? I'm really excited. I'm kind of nervous. I'm going to share Got a little bit of butterflies. Um, I might be a little starstruck on this one. So are you ready? It's JFK, former President John at Fitzgerald Kennedy. So I'm going to share with you too what this is. This is actually a, this is actually a, um, recording it's a it's an album that was done in memorial for John Kennedy after his his death in 1963 and we found it my husband and I when we were cleaning up uh, my mother-in-law's home and getting her ready for a move last year and so I got it so I'm really excited about this this is pretty cool and it's uh, off some of his famous speeches all right okay so all right, so he's here. I can feel his energy. <laughs> and uh, he's definitely one of my, um, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say. I feel kind of like um, a loss for words a little bit. So let's just bring his energy in. Um, I don't know what to call you. Can I call you John, Mr. Kennedy, President Kennedy? President Kennedy, come on in. All right, <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Oh my goodness, your energy. Okay, and then he moves over here and kind of sits over here. Thank you. Oh, and he sits down and he kind of sits and he crosses his one leg over the other and his knee looks a little higher when he's holding it and his hands are folded neatly across, uh, across it. He unbuttoned his su suit coat to sit down and he's got a white shirt underneath and he's got a tie that looks very, um, I can't tell if the suit's black or dark, dark navy blue, but the tie matches the suit in the background color and then there's stripes going this way on it. Um, it kind of reminds me of the one that uh, his son wore. It kind of reminds me of the one your son wore actually because we've already done a channeling with him, with John Jr. And But this one, yours has red on it. It looks like a red and a navy blue alternate. It kind of feels like a Harvard thing and he kind of moves it up and he has this tie clip, this clip on. Um, and it kind of looks like, I can't tell if there's actually a little, um, kind of a straight brassy part to it or not, or if that's in the front or the back, but there's a very, like a tack, like a tie tack, um, in the center. And it's got, it's like kind of presidential or something. No, it looks like Harvard. It looks like he's referring to, I don't know if you even went to Harvard. Did you go to Harvard? One of the Ivy League schools, most certain, yes, it feels like Harvard. And, and I think it's a clip from that or a tie tack. It's a circle and I can see the, the scales, that kind of a thing. Um, all right, all right. Then he says born and raised, like he's referring to Massachusetts, correct? Like Boston. He knows I love, okay, so um, I have an affinity for Boston. I've been there a few times myself and it's rich with history. I did not go to the Kennedy Library. I wish I would have. I think it's in Boston, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's there and um, there's a lot of Kennedy ties there. And so maybe that's why I like it. I'm not sure, maybe. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so I want you to talk, but I'm really trying to get over myself, you guys. This is the first time I've actually felt so incredibly starstruck, I think, that I can remember. Um, after my dad passed away, I actually um, spoke with you just briefly, um, President Kennedy. Mr. Ken, I don't even know what to call you, um, because my family was very much active um, in politics, and you were definitely someone that would have been admired well, uh, and I know that my dad would have wanted to meet you right away in the afterlife, so that was the first thing I asked him when I could, <laughs> as if he <laughs> met you, and he said, yes, do you want to meet him? And I said, yes, and so we met just very briefly at that time, and that was before I was doing my Above Life channel long before that. And so um, this is like our second meeting, but all right. So I wanted to talk to you about religion and politics. And I thought that would be, those would be two great topics that are usually taboo, right? But uh, I thought you would have a lot 
Awesome, good insight. He's just super polite, you guys, and very structured. It's, I can see his face. He's very, his face is very structured, but he's kind of casual. He's leaning back on this couch that we have here. He says, where would you like to begin? Where would you like to start? Well, I, first I would like to ask you about this place called heaven. And can you describe for us what heaven is like, what it feels like? for you, in your words, from your experience. And he just, he kind of wiped off, it looked like almost like something from his knee, he just kind of wiped off his knee and he said, you can call me Jack, Bridget. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, great, all right. Okay, I feel like a little girl when I'm, I'm talking to you, I'm, almost, I'm gonna get emotional. I feel like a little girl because when I was in fourth grade and fifth grade, it was fifth grade, I think, I wrote my first one of my first uh, book reports on you, an essay about you, and um, was really um, drawn to your family, you and your brother, um, Bobby, as well, at that time. And so um, this is really special to me. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. So tell us about heaven. What is it like? What does it feel like? I mean, are you still presidential? Do you and the other presidents just hang out? He laughs. He just literally leaned his head back and he went, ha, 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 ha. Uh, Not exactly, he says. Wouldn't that be a fun cartoon? Wouldn't that be a great political cartoon, actually, wouldn't it, is what he says. He's got a huge smile, you guys. Big grin, like eyes are just bright and shiny and big, big grin, and I can feel it. Oh. It's not the same as mingling on earth or connecting with one another at an event or a rally. It's, it's nothing like that. And I know that you know that, he says to me. But in the context of the audience that you're, you're connecting with, I will share this, my description of heaven as it isn't really a place, it truly is not a place for you to achieve or attain or to reach. It's not a mountain. Life is not a mountain you must climb and stand at the top and conquer or claim your rightful place. It's nothing like that. It, it's not something you need to work for or to prove worth for. It's much more a place within you that you seek to find throughout your entire lifetime. And, and it is a journey, perhaps to your heart, back into your source of oneness, your soul, your spirit. I'm trying to find the word he's using. He's giving me a feeling. He's giving me a feeling, an impression of, for some it's the heart and for others there is something at your core, the core of you that identifies who you are. And he's, he's talking about individualism. And he says, on that track, the individual within you creates whatever your experience is, not just in your own life that you are having now, but in the life that you will have beyond this, the life that is truly eternal. There is an existence that is really hard to comprehend and even to describe. That is, he kind of puts his, his head down a little bit. He pauses for a moment, kind of tilts his head and he takes a breath. Perhaps the best way to describe it in feeling terms is, is the word harmony, a oneness, a chorus, a multitude of, and, it, and he's making me feel like vibrations, like I can feel like when you chime a a symbol, a big symbol, like in a marching band, it crashes and then it kind of vibrates. That's what he's showing me. And it's like a symphony of multiple the word toning, tuning, tuning that is a part of what you might 
think that you are, the perception of yourself as you are human, as you are here in this real experience. But the extension of this is far greater than what you could possibly imagine right now. And that is the term that you use, he says to me, he says that's the term you use as afterlife. But truly it's not, that's not even an accurate enough of description of it. It is a, a powerful, and he shows me like this fire light. Oh my gosh. And instantly we're standing at the, the eternal fire, the eternal flame. There's a big marble slab and there's this circle in the center and it's this flame that doesn't go out. And John F. Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. I can see the thing, the memorial. It looks like we're in Washington. Are we in Washington? Yes. It's very, it's kind of cold here. It feels, um, this is Bridget explaining the vibe that he's showing me. He's showing me, look at this. It's like this. The flame never goes out. It's not just for me. It's for you. It's for you. And then he mentions the words dreams and coming true. And the, the, the facts are that the idea of truth is something that you, we inherit as a, a person with a mind that is individual. We inherit this noble cause that we stand upon called truth. And yet in this, in the purest form of your life existence, which is beyond your life, as you know it now, is something that will never be touched, tarnished, or... He kind of says like put out, like snuffed out. There will always be your light. Regardless of, apart from, he says apart from your choices. And I know that will be hard for many to understand, and it's not for me to make you understand. It's for you to discover for yourself what heaven is for you. And that is something that you, that you yourself as an individual will determine. And you will also define that. You will define it, he says. You will define not determine. Yes, define. I'm sorry. Yeah, define. You will, as an individual, will define heaven for yourself. You will define it. Thank you very much. That was a, that was incredible. That was wonderful. You are such a great orator. That is part of what I admire about you, your ability to speak and move an audience. And I just admire that. I love great speakers. I love that, and, and you definitely embody that in wholeness, even in the afterlife. So we talked a little bit about religion, or a little bit about heaven. What is the connection to religion? Is there a connection to religion and heaven, or religion and afterlife, perhaps? You know, after uh, we die, after we le our bodies die, and we have practiced maybe a certain religion or faith, what happens to that when we leave our bodies? He's showing me a huge church with big arches and a super tall steeple. And um, I'm Irish. I, it looks, I can see the, the, the symbols and the circular structure and nature and that would be Irish. And I feel, I hear like my body, I can kind of feel the vibration of the bells and the ringing of the bells, and it's like this incredible church. Um, but I'm on the outside, I'm not on the inside, and I can see the colors of the stained glass, and they're beautiful, and it feels like St. Michael's, or St. Michael, such and such, St. Michael's, and it feels like there might actually be also a school associated with this place. I don't know if it's, I don't know where it's at, are we in New York or in Boston? He shows me New York City for some reason, but I don't know if it's related to the church. But I see, he shows me New York City, like I can see New York. Um, interesting. Okay. 
Would you like to speak on this? Can you talk to us about the connection to religion and the afterlife? The practices of religion. He says, oh my, do you really want to open that up <laughs> for discussion? Ah, he says, oh my, do you really want to open up that for discussion? Yes, I, I would simply like, we're not looking for answers from you. We're looking for your perspective and your experience, your understanding about religion. Because I think that there's a lot there. There's a lot of information there. And there's a lot of um, very strong belief systems that individuals that will be watching this here at Above Life Channel as we are talking, um, they will be interested in this. How, how, does it, how does that work? How does religion work? And he says, if I told you, you would not, I don't know that you could believe me. I don't know that you could actually accept what I, what I would tell you as plausible. Well, try me. <laughs> it's like, you, are, you aren't gonna give up, are you? And he looks at you, the cameraman, and he says, she's stubborn one. She's a stubborn one, isn't she? You know, she's strong-willed, strong-willed. That's the word he uses, strong-willed. Thank you. I, I think that's a compliment. Mm -hmm. You should know something about strong women. And he's like, yes, and I'd rather talk about that. <laughs> You'd rather talk about your love life than religion? Oh, he says, oh, no, I'll give you an answer, he says. And my response would be this. Again, related to what it is, your definition of heaven, it's the same in regards to religion. Whatever you create as real for you, as your truth, is what your truth is. But there is also an opportunity to leave behind when you leave this term, to leave behind the regrets, the remorse, the reflection of things left undone and you can very truly step into the next state of your being without any any kind of baggage is the best word I can use it's not his word but that's the best word He's showing me like a clean slate. You can step in with a clean slate, regardless of what religion practices that you may have held or what sort of experiences you had in your human life. It, religion isn't really different than anything else. It is simply a belief system or a value-based system that you hold with your mind. And the mind then controls the experience or the expression of that value, that belief, he says, that belief and it creates your life. And when you have the point where you are at that point to transition into life beyond what you know right now, then you will have a choice. So religion may frame your reference here and now, but in the afterlife, it's pretty much the equivalent to having a job or a career that you had. And we don't stand around because we don't have bodies. We don't stand around and talk about what we do for a living or what we did for a living. I mean, that would be a great joke, wouldn't it? Another great cartoon having to do with religion. So now we've covered both your bases, politics and religion. Are you good with that? <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you. But let's talk about your family. Can we do that? He said, absolutely. Absolutely. So I did, um, I have done a channel here at Above Life Channel as we are talking to former president John F. Kennedy who we can call Jack, he said. He's very, he's, you know, allowing us to do that. Thank you. Very friendly and welcoming. Um, we've spoken with Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, so your, your former a wife in the human life. <laughs> and we've also spoken to your son, John John, John Kennedy Jr. and his wife, Carolyn. And so I know you have lots of family in the afterlife now and, um, I mean, is there like a Kennedy compound on the other side or what's that like, you know? And, and do, you, are, do you know, like as a spirit, do you know, are you aware of those that crossed over since your death or even before your death? I mean, how, did, how, how does that work? Talk about the family if you can. He says there's a lot, there's a lot to tell, isn't there? There's much to tell. Things that people actually haven't written in books, he says. 
there's no tell all. <laughs> he says, everybody has a part of what they think life was like, you know, he says, but they don't really know. No one really knows, truly. I was rather surprised at my son's arrival. It was not expected or anticipated for him to not live fully a life where he himself would have grandchildren. I wasn't able to see my grandchildren and I never expected that. And I, I'm sharing this from the perspective, he says, of being a father and reflecting back upon my life as a father, not as a spirit necessarily, but you asked as a spirit, he says. I think it will be difficult for your viewers to understand how family works in the afterlife. Again, I will restate that when you go into your heaven, your after human body experience, and you are welcomed in, or you move over or step into, he's trying to show me just kind of literally step over, move to the right a little bit or move to the left a little bit. That's how he's describing it. It's not this traumatic big boom thing. And oh my gosh, you know, he says, you just step over. He said, it's nothing like the birthing process. <laughs> it's much, much more gentle or graceful, even if, even if there's a tragic death. He says, quite, there's no, there's no distinction between the type of death, the moment of death. There's no distinction from the spiritual perspective, from the human perspective, from those who are left behind. Yes, there is. From our perspective, there's not. So when you said that John, John, John Kennedy Jr. arrived early or, or unexpectedly, are you, so you're talking about your human life experience, like as a father? Yes. And he's, he's leaning toward, he's saying that that's what most of you will relate to, that feeling of you wanting what's best for your children. And then he shows Caroline, uh, his daughter, and he shows me her at a podium and picking up this torch and like leading the charge. So I don't know if Caroline is interested in politics or if that's what you're talking about. And he says, he says right away, he puts his hands down and he says, there's many ways to lead. Many ways, do not be fooled. Do not be fooled by the enticement or the call into service of noble political, political aspirations. There are many ways to lead, many ways, within your own families, within your own communities. You can lead. Wow, okay. Oh, and I'm feeling just a, a lot of emotion. There's a great sense of, from a parenting, I'm going to share this with you guys, um, from a parenting perspective, he is very proud. He's proud of his family, of what he left here for us and the people, the people, the, the integrity. And he says, I can't claim, um, I can't take credit, he says, for the beautiful, intelligent, brave, and leaderful woman that Caroline has become. Okay, so who would you take credit for that? And he says, her, of course. He's like, her, of course. And he shows me, he shows me a little button. Um, I, when I grew up going to political functions and events, which I did, born and raised at them, <laughs> pretty much since I was in third grade, I remember going to functions and fundraising and door knocking and parades and handing out stickers and banners and flags and all that. And uh, he shows me this button. We used to collect buttons. I had a pin, a board and uh, a lot of political buttons. And one of them was your brother's. You know, Ted, Ted Ear, I think it said Kennedy 80. <laughs> Remember that one? Blue with white. But Jack is showing me the button that says, never underestimate the power of a woman. And it's funny. I remember that button very, very clearly. And later in my life, you know, 35 years later, I came across that same saying, I think as a magnet, and I think I have it on a magnet. I think I could, if I looked in my house here, I bet I could find it. Never underestimate the power of a woman. So he is proud, equally proud of his son and his daughter. 
as well. So, and he says, it's quite poignant. Oh, are you getting into politics now, mister? He says, well, you know, it would be my style. People would expect that. <laughs> yes, they would. Wouldn't people expect that, Bridget? Yes, they would. Okay, okay then. <laughs> well, then go ahead. He says, it's poignant that the legacy of the Kennedy administration, the Kennedy family, the first family, would be a woman, not a man. And he says that, not me. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, great. Oh, so there's no feeling of despair or regret or remorse or sadness for John John's life, John Jr.'s life. You know, and he says it was his to live. It was his to live as he chose. And I can't imagine the levity of how difficult it would be to live in the shadow of your father when your father was the president. It was, it was, it was enough for me and my, my brothers to be raised in an era where we were expected to be in service and we were groomed for the positions that we eventually held. And it was too many a surprise that I was the one that took the highest of honor and led at the highest level of government. I have a great deal of care for the country. And I recognize that through times of great change, there is a lot of distrust and there is chaos that is created. But don't, do not misunderstand this energy and what you're seeing and what you're hearing. Don't let the images and the words, the rhetoric overtake what you know is actually the situation, the actual truth of what is occurring is there is great change. And that is true now, just as it was when I left the earth. The same is true. The same is true. You know, it's a natural human thing to rise up and be angry and to want to fight and express your disgust or your distaste or your disdain in the way things are. And that is a powerful message. That is a powerful and meaningful message. Do not be distracted by what is not the true reality. Do not be distracted by a short-term explosion. Do not let your eyes move to something that is not important or is not at the core of the point of the change. Notice the waves of change. Just as the grieving process occurs, there are multiple stages. And with change in the country of the United States of America, there are multiple stages. And if you look back over time, history will show you, it will show you these states that the peoples move in. And at the point that it seems chaotic and dramatic and there's danger and everything is falling apart, that is when the scaffolding is being set. The foundation is being cleared away so that you can be very clear and see, see with your eyes through the lens of your heart what is real. What is really happening is that there is change and something profound is being created. And he's saying it takes courage to live through these times. And it takes an incredible resilience in the core belief of you as an individual. You as an individual. So tend to yourself and He's looking at me and pointing to like solar plexus, the spirit, and he's saying, that is your compass. It's not about human experience. It's about the soul and the heartbeat as one. Okay. 
Wow. Thank you for the insight and the commentary. There's a lot that is going on at this time in the world globally. We are a global society now. It's, there's so many inputs that we have to deal with and manage and so many other people, other sources, other things, other huge machines telling us what we should think and believe and feel. And your words, Mr. President John Kennedy, are grounding, are centering us. As we watch here at Above Life Channel and we feel what this time means to us, may we look to you through this sharing, this channeling, at the wisdom and the insights that you're offering to us, regardless of party affiliation. There's no separation in the afterlife. As you stated, there's a harmony, a oneness. It has been such a pleasure. I, I could talk to you for hours, hours. And uh, I hope I don't look too goofy in this video. I'm just going to say that to the people who are watching. But thank you so much. Thank you. He's just stay, sitting. He's just staying. He's not moving. So I'm going to talk to you guys. All right. So this is Bridget at Above Life Channel. The purpose here in this conversation with John Fitzgerald Kennedy in the afterlife has been to inspire your spirit as we come together each week with new channeling videos and new afterlife guests, I hope that you will feel, your heart will be filled up with hope through these videos. Remember, this, right here, right now, this time, it's your life. So live it. Live it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you know someone that would be so inspired to watch it, please share it. Go check out the playlist and look at all of the other videos related to Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis and to John Kennedy Jr. and to any of the other Kennedys that are channeled in the future. Thank you so much for watching.